I really like to start with the special teams. Um, I thought the special teams were, were really terrific today. We'd set an objective uh, to have a dominant game on special teams. And um, I thought we did that starting with the kickers. Um, you know, did a real good job for us. Uh, Kurt and, um, and Chris got us good distance, kicked the ball where, where we wanted it kicked, not just for distance, but where we wanted to kick. We had really good coverage with our coverage teams, uh, especially our kickoff coverage team. And then, of course, Mike Johnson stepped up with a terrific individual play when uh, Duke decided not to kick the ball away to us. So uh, we're really pleased with that. Uh, that's got to be part of our MO to be really good on special teams. And uh, there's ev every guy, we were very pleased with every guy who participated for at least one play on special teams today deserves uh, a lot of kudos. And uh, we tried to make them feel that way. Uh, defensively, uh, we did have good intensity throughout. I thought Al did a, a terrific job managing the game and that the, the, the type of game changed a lot. It went from a kind of a power game to a spread out uh, shotgun ride option game back to a power game. And, he had to get in and out of a lot of different schemes and communicate those to the players, and I thought he really did a good job. And so those two phases of the team, certainly, that you make reference to uh, stood up very well today. You've mentioned to us many times the, the critical importance of field position. I think you had six offensive drives that started on Duke's side of, of the field. Can you just speak to field position? Seemed like it was big all day today. Well, it, it certainly was, and, and that's one of the major issues in football games. You know, that's kind of not a jazzy thing to talk about. I think when coaches talk about things like hidden yardage and field position, everybody kind of says, oh, geez, you know, it's going to start talking about those things. But those are those are in integral elements in terms of winning games. And unless you're just a dominant team, uh, which we're certainly not, there are very few of them, and uh, but they're, they're parts of the elements of how you put your game together to win. You told me at halftime we want to play more aggressively offensively. You had three touchdowns in the first 10 minutes, granted on short fields, but how were you able to attack that Duke defense in the third quarter? Well, they were short fields, but they weren't short throws. Uh, I thought Marcus did a terrific job. Uh, obviously, he got the ball to the right guy and put it right where it needed to be put. The, the pass to, uh, to Tom Santee on the real long yardage situation there, I mean, that was the difference. You know, that's, not, uh, that's either going to be a touchdown or a punt. And so that, that's a big turning point in the game. Gave us a lot of juice and a lot of momentum. It was a terrific throw. Uh, excellent catch by Tom. And, uh, of course, the, the individual effort play by John Phillips was, was excellent. And uh, we hope that's the first of many for him. And uh, then again, uh, aggressively, Marcus put the ball out there on the, on the second run to Dayon. So I thought he really stepped up and did a real good job for us today. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Second half. What was the biggest difference in what you were doing? Well, I think we just we just kind of kept grinding, Jeff. You know, these things don't happen automatically, and um, you got to have a little bit of a uh, in games, a little bit of a grinder's mentality. You know, to, to go 60 minutes for for three plus hours that takes a while to do, and some people want it to happen right away. And uh, you know, if you're against good competition and good competitive players, which the Duke players came to play hard today. I thought they had a good scheme. I thought the kids played really hard. And they're going to make it sticky on you for a while. And you can't get discouraged. And you just got to keep grinding. I, I was pleased with that. I think that's that, that idea about being a grinder and not getting discouraged. And everything's not perfect. But uh, if you believe in yourself and uh, you don't blink and you don't flinch, well, that's got to be part of our MO as much as our schemes. What was, what was the tone at halftime? You kind of suggested what it was. It, you weren't angry or you didn't jump them or anything. You just told them to be patient. What, how were you? Well, you know, the players were given effort, Doug. You know, they want to play well. Um, and players come in in a circumstance like that. They look to the coaches. I don't mean just me. I mean to the whole staff. They want to be coached. You know, they want some answers. They want some direction. Um, sometimes that direction is motivational direction. Sometimes that is scheme direction. Um, obviously, things were going pretty well for the way the, the defense and the special teams wanted it to go. Offensively, it wasn't going. And we just talked about that sometimes in life you want to change your circumstances. Lots of people do. Um, but if you're going to change your circumstances, you got to change yourself. And you just got to collect, collect yourself and figure out how to play a little bit better. And, and we talked a little bit about a couple schemes we were going to use. And But uh, the offensive staff and Ron did a good job of kind of condensing their ideas for the second half, and it, it paid off for us. Do you sense this defense improving week by week out? Well, I think that the uh, the results would certainly say that, um, Jerry, and it should. 
You know, we started with an awful lot of players uh, uh, who don't have too much experience on that starting front seven. Uh, there's only two of them that uh, really have been career starters. Uh, there's uh, three of the four in the secondary who only have three games experience starting at their position. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of little bit of on the job training going on and it should be improving. And, and uh, uh, they, they did a very good job for us today, although I think the challenges are going to continue to get more severe from week to week as they have so far each week this season. Talk about the challenges to your offensive line the second half. You, you lose your all-conference left tackle, you lose your center, and you got two guys playing at that point who don't play much in a third, playing at a different position. Right. It, it, uh, it was very pleasing to see um, those play. And that's what a team's got to do. You know, every, People understand their roles and the expectations, and uh, Jordy Lipsy had to go in and play for the first time ever when the game was on the line. And uh, obviously our production with Jordy in there was good. Eddie Pinnegas had to do the same thing. Brad Butler had to move to the left, which is really the first time he's ever played any significant amount of plays at the left. And then we had the two, two new guards. So basically um, three games since the end of last season, we had a completely revamped offensive line. And, uh, that's a credit to their resilience, and uh, Ron did a good job of getting them organized at halftime as to what was going to go on, what we were going to call, and they were well prepped, so um, they, they can feel proud of what they did tonight. Now, did, uh, did Sandy hit his head on that touchdown catcher? I know he had a lot of people with him on the um, bench from that on. I didn't know. I didn't see that he did. Um, you'll, have, that you'll have to ask them. He was a, a little bit gassed and a little bit woozy, so... But I, I didn't see that he hit his head. Maybe he did, you know, I didn't see that. Now those turnovers that you guys forced, were, were any of those real standout plays? Especially, I guess, that first Hamilton interception looked like a good break on that. That was that an one. excellent play. You know, that's what a, that's what a big-time corner is supposed to do. And you, gotta, you have to be a little bit fearless out there and be willing to not gamble, but you got to be daring once in a while. And, and he was. We've tried to encourage that. And, uh, you know, that was very nice to see. We've got the strip sack, which was real good early in the game. I think that gave our defensive players a lot of energy. Were you not as aggressive last year as you, looking back as you wish you'd been? You've said several times the past couple of games that you got to take chances, you got to go for it. Well, um, you know, we had a different kind of team last year. And we had a team that was built around power. And that was, that was the way we played last year, it took best advantage of the type of players that we had. Um, this is a little bit different type team. Now, whether we can play this way um, in the future or play this way successfully, we'll have to see. But worked out okay today. How did look to you today? He looked kind of relentless from up in the box. Well, he's, he, he did to me, too. Doug. He's been pretty relentless here now for 180 minutes worth of football. You got Aaron Morales in today, and he seemed to be very active. Yeah. He, uh, he played a, a good good amount. Actually, we had the opportunity here to give some time to a lot of those guys that are going to be very important to us here. Jeff uh, Aaron saw um, considerable fourth quarter minutes. Uh, Antonio Appleby, uh, the same thing inside. Uh, Vince Red, Alan Billick at the defensive end positions. Chris Cook got a lot of plays today. Um, I thought he did a nice job for us. So uh, there's five guys on defense right there that. Uh, you know, on August the 5th, we didn't know what their contribution might be. And, and then have obviously come in and given us something that, that wouldn't otherwise be there. Is Parm developing more of a swagger as he strings together these great games, you know, three in a row now? No, I don't think – I'd be surprised if Kai's a swagger guy. He's got a lot of confidence in his ability, you know, and He's a big, strong, tough inside linebacker. That's the way inside linebackers in this system got to think, and he, he's playing to the model. Now, do you come in with a, a ceiling on the number of carries that Wally would get, or is that just kind of how things we did not. We just thought we'd see how it went. I, I, to, frankly, I don't really know how many any of them had. Yeah. The uh, touchdown by Phillips, have you seen that a lot in practice, the dragging guys along like that? Well, because we haven't had any of these, you know, take them to the ground practices. But he's done a real nice job from the start, as we've discussed, you know, in some of these teleconferences and whatnot. He's uh, demonstrated uh, in practice as he did today. Um, 
He's just dying back there to hear what I'm going to say. It's a short trip from Bath County, but you did a good job with it. <laughs> but, but John is like a number of those other un, young players that I mentioned is, has come in and, um, you know, he, he didn't have that stick his toe in the water and see what it's like and decide whether this was a good idea this year or not. He came in with the mentality that he was going to play and um, he, he did a real nice job today. And, um, he can be proud of his touchdown, and I'm sure he wish he had that holding penalty back, right, John? <laughs> you mentioned Michael Johnson earlier, had all his juice. Can you just elaborate on his game today? It seemed like he played very well. Well, he did. Um, you know, Mike's, um, Mike's a player that, that we've been kind of waiting for for quite some time. He brings a, uh, an element of speed to our team that's, that's a little bit special for us. And that showed up on a number of plays today. He really, the game speeded up on, on some of those carries for Mike. And then he got a chance to really see it on the kickoff return.